welcome everybody. Uh, this is now the fifth episode of uh, a series of webinars with Dr. John Scherer uh, called Facing the Tiger, Tiger, Unleashing the Human Spirit at Work. Um, this is uh, a second episode where we have the honor and a great privilege to have a special guest, Barry Johnson. Uh, so John is going to be with Barry again tonight. Two weeks ago, um, Barry did a marvelous um, talk for us on polarities, um, referring to um, large-scale polarities that are present in the world. Um, and uh, after all the feedback, being how interesting everybody found it, uh, we are now here again doing a second episode with Barry, this time looking into polarities in your relationships. So at the title of this episode, I think is um, polarities in personal relationships. And we're going to be diving in into a, a more personal ground uh, with Barry Johnson, the author of Polarity Mapping, and John Scher, who did um, relationship coaching before relationship coaching existed, uh, just probably over 30 years ago. Um, uh, John was for many years a, a, a couple therapist, gestalt therapist, uh, and a relationship coach. So you're in for a big treat. Welcome, gentlemen. And I'll hand over to uh, Barry, I guess. Okay. Now, so do I have permission to share my screen? Uh, is that let me see if I if I have that. I can try and share it and see. All panelists, okay. You're on. Okay, so let me try this. <clears throat> All right, so share. It's working. And uh, okay, let me just for if there are if there are some people who are are uh, experiencing or learning about polarity thinking. <clears throat> For the first time, this is just a, a quick summary uh, introduction to to make sure that everybody's got at least a minimum amount of support in the discussion that John and I are going to have. So all I'd like to do on this one slide is is make a distinction between a problem and a polarity. And um, <clears throat> oops, I got to click on the screen here. So okay, so <clears throat> uh, a problem requires or thinking, and a polarity. Uh, clarity requires and thinking. <clears throat> so uh, just as, as very simplistic examples to understand this, um, if I were given an opportunity to stay at a, at a job that I had or to leave, to go to uh, another organization, uh, I'd have a choice to make. Am I going to stay or am I going to leave? <clears throat> now, it's very helpful to you know, be able to weigh my options and I can go through a lot of things, but finally I'm gonna make a decision. And if I decide to stay, then it means I've let go of the uh, leaving for the moment <clears throat> and the problem is solved. I was able to choose one and solve it and now I can move on. There's nothing inherent in my decision to stay that says I'm gonna have to leave sometime later. Or if I had chosen to leave, you know, it's like there's nothing inherent in, in one choice that I've got to include the other choice over time. So or thinking can be very useful. It's essential to learning language, to learning culture, to solving problems in science and physics and health. Um, so or thinking is, is absolutely essential, whether you want to get to the moon or build a computer. But or thinking is not useful when we are dealing with issues which require and thinking. And those are polarities, which are interdependent pairs, meaning that you can't choose one or the other and be successful over time because they are an interdependent pair. So an example of this on the right-hand side here is inhaling and exhaling. Now, notice it just makes no sense to say, am I going to inhale or am I going to exhale in the future? Um, no matter who wins, if, if John and I are in a fight over this, it doesn't matter who wins, we're going to be, you know, blue in the face soon. So because it's a polarity, we need to, we need to connect the two with and. Now, so all polarities are, are an interdependent pair. They're connected by the word and because we need both over time. Another important dimension of all polarities is that they sit within an energy system. And that energy system is an infinity loop that oscillates between and around both of them. 
So for example, when we inhale and exhale, we are in this infinity loop. We're in a segment of it at any point in time. So um, if, uh, if we inhale, we get oxygen, which is a huge benefit for inhaling, but it's not a solution to the breathing problem. What we discover is if we hold that inhaling long enough, we experience the limits of inhaling alone, which is excess carbon dioxide. When we experience that limit, the natural self-correction is to go to the upside of the other pole to clear out the carbon dioxide. Now, in one sense, excess carbon dioxide is problematic, and exhaling in order to clear it out is, a, is absolutely essential. But there's a difference between doing something that's essential and seeing it as a solution to a problem. It's clearly not a sustainable solution. If we hold our exhalation long enough, we experience the limits of exhaling, which is a lack of oxygen. That drives us back to the upper left again to get oxygen. So, uh, so this is the essential dynamic of all polarities. Um, there are two poles that are interdependent. The, there's an energy system that crosses between them that keeps them separate. Inhaling and exhaling never merge into one phenomenon. They stay as separate, uh, interdependent pairs. Each of them has an upside. So inhaling brings something essential and exhaling brings something essential. And each of them has a limit, which is experienced to a significant degree when you focus on one without the other. So um, this is how all polarities work. When you do have a polarity, what you need to do is make sure that you're getting both upsides and not getting caught in either downside. And that allows you to sustain life. So let me just stop sharing with that brief introduction. And I think, Barry, you talk about the vicious cycle and the virtuous cycle, I think is what you're referring to, that you're, you're, since you're always going to have tension between those two, yeah. you can't do it. In fact, you don't want to do away with the tension. The, the, the tension keeps, keeps the movement happening, but when right. you get stuck, you end up in a vicious uh, cycle rather than a virtuous cycle. Right, and, and the way you were, you were pointing your fist is when you see it as this, it's like an either or, you know, it's a zero sum game. If you move five steps this way, somebody's backing up five steps. But the energy system is actually crossing in the middle. So, so the energy is moving like this. And when we experience that crossing, there is a tension there. Wait a minute, are we gonna do this or are we gonna do this? And, and the notion is, well, we can do both over time. We can do both, so it crosses, and then the energy not only differentiates between the two, but it wraps around the two and holds them together. So they're differentiated, but they're also connected in an ongoing basis. And it's helpful to see them. And when we see them, we just treat them differently than the problem to solve. Um, we just, we don't, we don't make the false choice. So I'm just going to do this and that'll take care of it because it won't. Like, like, what is it time for now? I think that's the, like you've said, that's the function of great leadership. Is, yeah. What is it time? Where, where are we on this thing? And what is it time for now? Yeah. Great. Okay. So um, when John and I were talking about this uh, a, a while ago, just in anticipation of the meeting, it was like, well, what, what do we do with, with polarities and relationships? And, and as we talked, we agreed it would be helpful to start with intrapersonal polarities and then, and then move into uh, relationship polarities and interpersonal polarities. And the reason I, I want to start with intrapersonal polarities is because how we leverage those radically affects <laughs> how we do with our interpersonal uh, uh, polarities and issues. So um, I think, uh, John, be, it would be great to have you uh, talk about some of these intrapersonal polarities. And uh, this is what I think put us together when we first met, when Frank put us together in the meeting, we realized that we were talking about about the same phenomena, we had different words for it, different ways of looking at it, but we were both really enthralled with this phenomenon of this interdependence and how it shows up. And so your, uh, the, your shadow work, I think, is, is as good as any I've seen at paying attention to the shadow, which on a polarity map, there are two shadows essentially, there's a downside to each pole, and whatever is our preferred polarity, our strongest shadow is the downside of the other pole. And so um, why don't you just take it away and talk a little bit about what you, what you see in terms of intrapersonal polarities. Great. 
Great. John, just before you go, I just wanted to, to, to ask everybody, remind everybody that we are going to be taking time to answer questions uh, in the second half of the Thank webinar, you. but feel free to be posting stuff in the chat box as we go along. We'll be gathering that for later discussion. So anytime something touches you or you have a question, go ahead and post it in the chat box. Thanks. All right. So uh, mm -hmm. this this is actually what what brought us together, Barry. Thanks for making that segue. Um, and I'm, what, what I'm going to do now, as, as we uh, said, Barry, is I'm, I'm going to give you a, a little bit of a taste of what we uh, what's at the heart of, um, of, of, of our leadership seminar, uh, because this is what it really is all about. And we, we start with the idea that there's an outer layer to who we are. We call it the persona from the Greek mask. The Greek word for mask is persona. And, and then I, we like to ask people, what, how would you like to be seen? What words would you, uh, you know, ho how would you hope people would gossip about you? So very quickly, these are mine. Uh, I want to be seen as bright and clever and warm and caring and insightful and easygoing and spirited and, you know, resourceful and adventurous and brave and all this, handsome and wise and all those things. And then we ask people to put uh, stars by the most important ones. And then we ask people to pick a character from history or literature or the movies or TV to represent, to be an icon inside of that poll, Barry. So that they, they have, we have these two shorthand. So when you click on this icon, you get this drop down menu, so to speak, with all the blue stars. And so my persona character used to be MacGyver, you know, clever, resourceful, and all that. And when I got over here to Eastern Europe, a group of people said, no, no, no. Yannick, you're no, no, no. You, MacGyver's clever. You're you're actually wise. I'd never thought of that word. And I, and they said we've come up with a new persona character for you. I said who is it? And they said Yoda. And I said oh that's fabulous. I love Yoda. But they must have seen something in my face because they said what? And I said well he's 800 years old and he lives in a cave all by himself and he walks with a cane and he waits for Jedi knights to come in so he can be wise and everything. And then I went that that's kind of like my life right now, you know, uh, except for the cane part. And I said, I need to get out more adventurous and brave and all this and handsome. I mean, Yoda's not exactly handsome. So I said, I need another character. So it's Indiana Yoda. That's my persona character. So now we've established one pole of, the pol of my internal polarity, okay? And then, well, what's the other pole? If this is how I would like to be seen, then this next layer is how I would not like to be seen, which is what I call the shadow. And of course, on my shadow, these are all things I would never want to be seen as cold and cruel and destructive and uh, bigoted and ugly and needy, whiny, dependent, you pathetic, hateful, arrogant. And then these are the these are the worst words for me. And Trump had to come up as my shadow as soon as he took office. He's just so, so perfect for me in that regard. And as you'll see later, uh, that's not exactly a bad thing uh, to, to, to have whoever your shadow character is. Turns out to be a very significant uh, teacher in your, in your polarity, something to offer. But over here on the left, this is the power pack that keeps this whole game going. The, the, the positive pole is, is, what, is what you're addicted to. I'm addicted to being warmly remembered. Like when I'm on automatic in my, and I'm out of, out of control, uh, what I want to do is I want to shoot up hits during the day of getting warmly remembered. And that way I can stay in my persona. See, it's blue and avoid any possibility of getting over here uh, in, in, into Trump because then my terror is that I would be completely forgotten. So with that as a, as, as a polarity, what happens is you put these two characters together and this varies what came out of our work together in our leadership program. Now, actually, this is the reflection of it. So um, Indiana Yoda has upsides, you know, uh, people remember me and good things happen to people. But then there's the downside. There's the shadow to, to, to it, it's having to be Indiana Yoda. I walk in a room, if I have to be Indiana Yoda, if that's my only option, then what happens to everybody else in the room? You know, the, what about there? It, it has the potential to uh, disempower other people and shrink everything down. So ironically, what I need is some of what Trump has. Like Indiana Yoda, uh, Trump knows how to build a following. <laughs> he knows how to create a following. If I'm going to be the head of an international consulting firm, it would be lovely to be able to build a, you know, a large following. He knows how to do that. 
So he knows how, he, he, he can teach me something, see? And so there's, a, ironically, an upside to some of what the gifts are that he has, right? And of course, they're the downsides as well. So what is needed is when is it time for, for a little bit of the best of a Trump-like character and when is it when is it a little bit time for uh, for Indiana Yoda? So that's how Barry, um, that's the uh, uh, oversimplified version of what each of us, all of you that are listening, you have one of these inside of you, and there and you have several of these polarities. But this is a kind of an oversimplification of a fundamental polarity that I have inside of me. So as you're watching this, you might be thinking, I wonder who my two characters might be, and what's the relationship between the two. And how much airtime do I give to my shadow, uh, to my shadow character? And I just, I just like to build on that, John. Before going away from this, this screen, one of the uh, benefits of what you've just done, even you know, with this uh, uh, putting Trump as a as a neutral name, the polls are either no, both positive or neutral in the polarity. And if you put it in as a neutral name, it it undermines our tendency to project all of the things we don't like about ourselves onto this shadow, uh, onto this other, um, and, and it dehumanizes us and them. But when you, put a, when you say, well, what are, you know, what are the upsides or what are some possible upsides to, to the character of Trump and what are some downsides? What is he really good at? It seemed, yeah, what is he really good at? It, it, um, it humanizes them as somebody who's, who has their own struggles, clearly, but they, they can't be simplistically demonized, um, which I think is humanizing for, for us and for them. Great. Well, I know I just want to put in a plug for what we said in the last uh, uh, webinar with you, Barry, and those of you that, are, that, that were here remember that Barry uh, mm -hmm. has put together a presentation and is, is doing his best to get it in front of the new Biden-Harris administration in America just exactly on this thing how to how to how to work at that macro level with all the all the polarities involved we have our fingers crossed Barry <laughs> thanks and actually actually it, it has been uh, it has been enhanced as we thought about about who we were approaching and how to actually include all elected all federally elected officials Republican and Democrat so we needed to create a presentation that that they would feel included and and respected in the process. So that's that's been exciting. It's it's uh, it's it's just beginning here. So we'll we'll see what happens in the next few months. Sounds like a great polarity exercise, Barry. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's hope we can get uh, Mitch McConnell to you know to, to to play ball. Well, Barry, that's the intrapersonal, you know, and and so let me hand it over to you to to now open up the interpersonal. Okay, uh, sure. So <clears throat> um, when I was thinking about, about the interpersonal, um, I essentially went back to the, to the new book, Anne, because I intentionally, in, in every section of the book, um, I talk about a key polarity, and my way of, of exploring that polarity is to start off at the personal or family level, uh, the, the, that small system level, and then work uh, you know, individual or family, and then go to organization, and then go to nation, and then go to international, to the planet. And so the, the notion is that the, the part whole polarity, for example, that we start off with, um, the part in a family system, the part is, it would be me as a, as a member of the family, and then the family. And how do I take care of my needs? But how do I also pay attention to the needs of the family? This is what do we teach our children as they grow up. Life isn't all about you. It is about you, but it's not all about you. <laughs> so you have to consider also your brothers and sisters or your, you know, your parents, whatever. And so, um, so that's one, the, the part whole polarity shows up. And I'm just going to share with you what some of the other polarities are and how they show up at the family level. And again, there's a whole section of the book on it. So it relates to everyone. So we also have the part part um, uh, in cu with, with couples. You know, do I take care of myself or do I take care of my partner? Mm -hmm. And the answer would be yes. And, 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 you know, and how do we do that? You know, how do I take care of myself and take care of my partner? If I over-focus on taking care of my partner to the neglect of myself, there's a subtle kind of resentment that occurs 
and it gets, you know, and it also can be very over controlling. Um, and so there are real dysfunctions to taking care of the other, not only for me, but for them. Um, and the reverse, you know, if I just take care of myself and not them, uh, that becomes dysfunctional. Um, another key polarity section is on justice and mercy. So we teach our children from a, from a very young age, um, you are my child, I love you, nothing you can do about that, that's just how life is, you've got me, I'm your parent, and you don't talk to me that way. You don't hit your sister upside the head with a stick. So you belong to this family, um, you belong to the universal family, um, and behavior matters. Um, so there's a combination of, of a challenge and support uh, that show up in all coaching practices, for example. And in all relationships, there's a, there's a notion of being challenging and supporting. Um, so that's, uh, that's the justice and mercy. Stability and change shows up in a system where two of us, we want to we wanna change some routine that we've got or something we want to change. <laughs> and, uh, there's going to be the, uh, the underlying polarity here of, of what is we're trying to hold on to when this change, uh, because it's important, and what is it that we, we need to change, want to change to, uh, to make things better. Um, uh, an, another one is, is doing and being. And this is one that, uh, that I found myself being, I, I mentioned this in the chapter at the end of the book about uh, making a difference and enjoying life. And in this particular relationship, polarity, um, uh, just a brief story here. Um, I just finished um, a, a, a long, hard project with, well, a fun project, but, but a lot of work um, for several months with Amico in creating the first, our first learning, computer-based learning system about polarity thinking. And I was, I was just all excited about it. And, and the day after that happened, uh, my wife, Dana, called me up in the morning and she said, um, I'm, I'm coming to have lunch with you uh, in your office. I've already checked with, you know, with the secretary and I see that your lunch is open. And I've invited a couple of your friends, David, who was a partner of mine at the time and a really good friend, uh, John Otterbacher. They're coming as well. And I immediately thought, isn't this terrific? Um, you know, Dana is aware that, that the, you know, the project with Amico has, has been all sealed. It's been sent off to them. We're gonna have a celebratory lunch. Um, so uh, <laughs> lunch, lunch time comes, Dana brings in the lunch basket and she comes in and there's, there's no balloons. There's no, <laughs> there's none of the accoutrements of a celebration that's happening. And so David walks in and John walk in and they're, you know, they're cordial and polite, but they're not, there's no congratulations happening here. And so I don't quite understand how I've missed something. And, uh, and then we sit down, we start with lunch and, and they all share with me that this is a confrontation meeting about my inability to manage the polarity of, of work and home. Wow. And, uh, and so they proceed to each one of them say, look, we love you and you are killing yourself and you're destroying your relationship with your family. Wow. Uh, and, uh, and, and it's got to stop. Um, so, um, wow. <laughs> so, so, uh, so it, it was so clear. I mean, they all gave examples of what I was doing that was, <laughs> that was undermining my relationship and my health. And uh, they all had, unfortunately, a lot of very strong arguments for, <laughs> for what I was doing. So I was really embarrassed, but it was also clear that they, that, you know, they loved me a lot and that, this was, that they were, it was all caring and loving. So I was embarrassed. I knew they were, they were right. And I was also embarrassed because I'm the guy who had written the book on managing polarities, and I had just <laughs> totally lost, lost out any perspective on this one. I was overly focusing on work to the neglect of home. So Dana and I sat down, and this was 1993. We sat down, put out a polarity map, work and home, and, and we, we figured out what are we going to do for action steps to support each upside and, and downside. And uh, there have been lapses but they have not been long or deep uh, in the last, uh, since 93. But for the most part, we've managed it much better uh, from that point forward. So that's, that is an example of a, of a relationship polarity that I did very poorly with. And with the help of Dana and others, um, I'm doing better with these days. Wow, Barry, I 
Thank you. That I had never, I had not heard that. I've known you a long time. What an amazing story. And I just, what it makes me think of at, at the process level is obviously they built in early indicators like the canary in the mines, right? Yeah. Like yeah. what are the early signs that you're slipping or something? Yeah. Yeah. And so, and so I've shared that map. I've done a lot of, uh, uh, when I consult with organizations around issues of burnout and they look at their, how they can manage their lives in a way that, that supports their taking care of work and home. Um, there's, uh, we, we work with that polarity and they, they work in teams. So they all talk about, think about what might be action steps and they all learn from each other. Oh yeah, I could do that with my partner, you know? And uh, so it becomes a highly generative exploration of how they could be more effective in, in, uh, in dealing with the work home polarity. Fabulous. Well, let me pick it up here, and um, and I want to say that as a as a as an old family counselor uh, therapist uh, back in the day, um, when Barry and I were thinking about this, um, I said to him that maybe we should talk about what occurred for me as somebody that helped people with their relationships. I called them the Big Five because it, when, when relationship was going well, these five these polarities in these five were being, you know, attended to, shall we say. And when the relationship wasn't going as well, it meant there was some, that they were out of balance in at least one of these. And what we liked, what I'd like to do is, 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 is put the category up here and then ask you in the chat box to name two poles. Like, let, let's do an example. The, the, the first one is money, okay? So when you think about a couple, like I did a lot of, uh, when I was at Cornell, I married a lot of people, did a lot of premarital counseling and, and, and work uh, you know, before and after people got together. What is it that couples argue about? What, when, what are some of the things they get into where we're either gonna do this or we're gonna do that when it comes to money? Put, put uh, this and then, and then write an or in the middle so we know that it's, that's a polarity that isn't being uh, very well thought of. So we're going to do this or that. Let me throw out an example. Uh, sweetheart, are we going to save our money or are we going to invest our money? Something like that. So put a couple more up there and Aggie's going to, Aggie's going to keep track. Well, I love this one. Have a life now or have a life later. <laughs> <laughs> see, and how do we turn that into an and, you see? Hmm. Have reserves or spend on pleasures? Um, spending Great. versus saving or a risk versus safety. Beautiful. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. That's a classic. So how do we take a risk and protect what we have? You know? mm -hmm. Vacation versus home repairs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Practical <laughs> versus, you know, uh, whatever. What, 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 and Barry, please, if you could see what, what <clears throat> clearly what a polarity is here, throw it in. Uh. Any others? I'm going to go. Um, we have one that says leave money for son or for the kids or yeah. use up whatever we have saved. Great polarity. Mm. Do, I, do, I, do I leave it as a part of my legacy or do I enjoy it now? And how to turn that into an and. Like mm -hmm. I, want to, I want to enjoy it now and I want to leave it to my kids. What, you know, how do we? How to just, yeah, just, yeah, just to, to build on some of those. Some of those are what, what I call a chosen polarity. In other words, you could choose to, to stay with, one, with the one for the, for the sun, you know, uh, spend it on us or save it, you know, save it for the sun. You can choose one or the other. Um, so in that case, it's not an intrinsic polarity because you can choose to do one or the other. At the same time, if you decide that you want to do both, then it becomes what I call a chosen polarity. I want to figure out effectively how I can take care of both of those interests. Um, and, uh, so, so anyway, that's, that's a, so it might not be equal, but like how much of this can we, how much of each of these, it sounds like, like, it, like, should we buy this house or that house? That's a problem to be solved, right? Cause as soon as we yeah. buy this house, the other house disappears as an option. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So money is money was the first of the biggie time. How do we spend our time? How do, how much respect do we have for time? You know? Uh, being on time or you know being casual about time um, uh, so i know some people that are on this call and so i'm sure they will and they've 
been in various kinds of relationships with me. So on both of these, I'm sure that there's some good polarities out there. Uh, what are some that are showing up, Aggie, about time? Uh, John, is, did you want to invite everybody to participate in the book um, competition while we're at this? Oh, this okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what, yeah, yeah. Do you want to explain it? No, you go ahead. Okay. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to have, uh, there's, there's, there's going to be five of these. And what we're going to do is, um, uh, Barry, we'd like you to be the, the one. Uh, we'd like you to pick one of the polarities that shows up in the chat box as being one that you like. And what we are going to do is, uh, at, at my new book called Facing the Tiger will be coming out just before Christmas, and we want to give uh, five of those books away on this call, one to each of the people that have a really intriguing polarity. So, uh, Barry, pick one from money, and then here we go with, 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 with time. Uh, mm. You know, are we strict about time or loose about time? Where do we so, spend our time? Do we spend how much with each other, how much with other people? Go ahead. So some other ones that are showing up is time alone or time together. Great. Uh, work versus play. Yeah. Um, work versus homework of kids. Um, my priorities and your priorities. Great. Yeah. Um, uh, shared time or private time for introverts, especially it's a big one. <laughs> um, same as money, my priorities, your priorities, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I've just got one suggestion for, for people who are entering things. I would encourage you to put uh, the word and between the two yeah. poles of whatever your polarity is. Rather um, than or. Rather, rather yeah. than versus or or. Um, yeah. the, 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 where the verses come from is, is that there is a tension between them. So versus, you know, there's a, a feel of that, that tension. A conflict, yeah. But um, yeah, but the I think if you put and it actually shifts your whole thinking about about how you're going to respond to that. Mm -hmm. um, Thank you. The minute I said or I had I wanted to pull it back and, and say <laughs> and because I I caused some of that problem. So money, time. Here's a good one. Uh, going back to money, uh, a, a great one showed up: joint account um, and separate account. Yeah. I think yeah. that's a practical approach to money, um, and it's a nice uh, end polarity. Uh -huh. uh, not now, now or later, now and later, <laughs> I guess for time, now and future. Mm -hmm. mm. Right. Say when, because this next, this this third one is really a hot one. Uh, I think we're ready for the next one. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like intimacy, physical intimacy. Uh, who initiates? Scheduled uh, and random. Yeah, random, scheduled, you know, how often, <laughs> whatever. I, I know you got to be careful because it's going in the chat box here, but what are some of the general areas where a couple can, can get into or thinking when it might actually be a whole lot better if it were and thinking? My orgasm and your orgasm. There you go. <laughs> that, one, that one's got a lot of potential, a lot of heat in it, yeah. Is uh, it sex and intimacy. For me and for you. Is this one for me and for you, yeah. Uh, masculine and feminine. Great. Uh -huh. um, we have play and love. Uh, we have romance and passion, sex and intimacy. Beautiful. Uh, for having children and for pleasure. Wow. Uh -huh. these are great. Mm. Power and intimacy. Hmm. Wow. That's interesting. Uh -huh. Morning and evening. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, giving and receiving. Mm -hmm. It's a great. Yeah. Cool. Uh, my preferences and your preferences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Sex yeah. and love. Predictable and variety. Yeah, all of these are great. I debated putting this one in, but it's it it but it really is a significant part of a of a of a personal relationship. So, and and over time, you see, you can only have sometimes you can have small differences in these uh, areas. But over time, if you, if you overemphasize one over a long period of time and the other one never comes, you can, you know, as long as you keep, keep it going back and forth, you're okay. But over time, if it goes like this, that's when trouble comes. Physical space, neat, messy, small, big, you know, log cabin, uh, condo in the city. Uh, you know, what are some of the polarities that exist when you think about physical space? <clears throat> My space and our space comes to mind. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. 
a part hole kind of barrier, like a part hole polarity in a way? My yeah. mass and your mass. Um, we have city and country. Uh -huh. um, inside and outside. Home and freedom. Order and chaos. Uh, open and closed. Oh, safety and liberty. That one's good with kids. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Light and dark is another one in my little house here. I find myself appreciating. Oh, also this uh, from Mike Murray, privacy and community. Yeah. Yeah. And some of these showed up um, uh, a number of years ago. I lived in a collective and, and what mm -hmm. turned out to be one of the most, uh, the, the biggest sources of, of, of tension in the community was what I called the compulsive sloth continuum. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and and I tend to hang out on the on the compulsive side, and so so it was real clear. And and so what what helped a lot in that one was our being clear about how we agreeing together how we wanted community space to be, mm. and recognizing that you know when people had you know their own bedroom might be significantly uh, different than than what we tolerated in community space, but that was their bedroom or whatever. So yeah, my space and our spaces. Yeah. I think I think Barry, one of the insights that I got early on in in, in 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 talking with you is that both poles are valid. Like mm -hmm. when I think about messy and neat, I know with Kath, I would I would oh you know when like we had a deal, whoever cooks, the other person would clean up. At least I think you're on the call, Kath, so you, you can <laughs> wake me out if I'm not telling the truth. And so uh, I'm I'm a little bit of a Virgo, so I'll, I'll you know wipe a knife and put it away. You know, but Kath is an artist, you know, and, and when she creates, the th putting, cleaning the knife, it's like, why? Why bother with that? We'll do that later, right? And so for me, I would find myself getting judgmental about her way of doing it. Like there was something wrong about the way she was, this is, you shouldn't be like that. That's not a valid way, you know, to be. And, and it's, it's crazy. It's just not, it's just not true. That is a perfectly valid way to be. You know, an artist doesn't necessarily have to clean up every time they use a every time they use a brush. You know, so that was really really helpful to me, was to realize that that my way is valid, but so is Kath's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when is it time to be? When is it time to just make a mess and just you know not worry about being a you know a Virgo? Okay, I hope I got that right, Kath. All right, and then, <laughs> and, and the fifth one is other relationships. Do we have friends? How do we choose our friends? Who, what kind of friends do we want to have? Is it okay? Have, what, what kind of friendships can we have? Can we go dancing with somebody else? Can we, can we play tennis? You know, uh, some of those kind of uh, uh, dynamics. Do we have friends? How many do we have? That kind of thing. Where do we spend our, who, who, do, we, who do we want to spend our time with doing what? What are some more polarities that come to mind when you think about other relationships? Mm, so something that just came up, John, is your boundaries and my boundaries. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Uh, close and distant, mm -hmm. uh, family and friends, um, social distancing and gathering. <laughs> That's a big one these days. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> me <laughs> and mother-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> That's a hard and I bet to put in there. <laughs> I like that one. Precious few and social network. Wow. Yeah. Our friends and my friends. Wow. My parents and your parents. <laughs> I'm thinking quality and quantity. Sometimes introverts would rather, more introverted people want to have a few really, really deep friends and extroverts you know, want to have a... In-laws and outlaws. <laughs> I'm sorry, say it again. In-laws and outlaws. <laughs> <laughs> um... Fun and support. Okay, so so let's put a call time on these on the big five here. And 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 Barry, if you could uh, make a note of which one in each of these areas, kind of you would just you would just you know choose for whatever reason, um, and then uh, we can let let that is is there a way? Are they connected with their names in the chat box, Aggie? Uh, yes, they are, of course. Okay, so we have to find a way to get them the, you know, the link to the book. So what's a good way to do this? 
Anybody got any hot ideas? I think what we'll do is, um, since the chat will stay with us, uh, we'll just ask Barry um, if that's okay with you, Barry. So we don't have to do it during pick one. The yeah, pick one in each category uh, at the end of the session. So stay tuned with us for the, the end of the session. Um, those of you who are interested, and if you're not with us, we'll just email you and, and, and send a copy of the book. Great. It'll be a couple of weeks before it's out. Very, very cool. <laughs> and I love this polarity, give books to him and her. Uh, <laughs> it's great. All right, I'm gonna stop the share here. And uh, you know, we, we need to go into the Q&A here, but there are also relationships at work. And you know, these are not the, these are not the big five uh, for people. Uh, <laughs> Catherine says, marginally correct. That's a joke, because our son Asa, who's very precise, he would say it's marginally correct. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's great. Okay, uh, we can go to Q&A. Uh, just just uh, a tip of the hat to relationships at work. You can imagine you're in a team, but some of the same kind of dynamics, how fast and slow, big picture details. These are some that, 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 that I've run into. Uh, you know, do we focus on the big picture and details? process, you know, output, the, the journey and the destination, you know, the target and the process and so on. Task and people, these are some that you run into uh, in, a, in a relationship um, at work. Okay, you wanna open it up? Can we see what kind of questions you wanna throw out here for Barry? Yeah, so th this, is, this is your chance now to be asking Barry or John any uh, questions about uh, managing the polarities uh, and the more... Um, oh, Peter uh, also you know, has his hand practical. raised. Great, so Peter's raised his hand. Let's see, what's, let me, uh, can we go to the chat here? Uh, uh, I don't see a question from Peter in, in the Q&A or the chat box. Uh, please post your questions in either Q and A or the chat box. I know sometimes okay. people raise their hands accidentally, so and, and that's what I'm guessing it is. I've got, a, I've got a question. I just started scrolling through the chat room, and there's one question: um, At what age is it possible to begin teaching both and? Since early schooling is so focused on either or, math, spelling, multiple choice, etc. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I I think I think it it actually does begin way before school starts. So, uh, for example, <clears throat> um, when we, I'd like you to imagine this situation. Uh, you're, uh, you, you have a, a, one of your uh, children is in the room playing with maybe another child or, or some neighborhood kids, but there's, there's you know, three or four kids playing with some toys together in, uh, on the floor in the house. And all of a sudden you hear this, some fighting takes place over the toys. And, and, uh, and maybe you're, let's say you're one of the, you're one of the two-year-olds on the floor and you're in this, in this conflict over the toys. One of your parents comes in, hears all this commotion and, 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 you know, looks at the situation. What is it that that parent tells you you should do with your, cho with your toys, uh, with these neighborhood kids? You should what? Share, right? Share. Exactly. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> now, this is one of your early introductions to both and thinking. Sharing is a, is a social arrangement that we teach our two-year-olds, which is about taking care of themselves and taking care of others. Mm -hmm. Sharing is the mechanism. So mm -hmm. we're teaching them about both and thinking. You can take care of yourself and you can take care of them. You just have to figure out between you how you do that, but you can. It's called sharing. Right? So um, the notion that sometimes I have executives say, Barry, this is terrific, but our middle management wouldn't understand it. My response is actually your two-year-olds understand it. When you, <laughs> you know, so it's like at some basic level, we've been learning this from a very young age. So I'm not sure how, how early you could teach it in school, but it's been a real uh, source of curiosity. I've encouraged people in education to to explore that and look at it. We have a book on polarities in education, but that is addressed towards the teachers and administrators, not towards teaching it with children. And, and so I'm hoping that that will, that will be something that someone will take me up on who's willing to take the initiative 
because of their desire, their interest in that area. I think it can be taught. Um, I think it can be taught in in elementary school. Um, I think it would be very useful to be taught um, in in junior high, uh, especially when kids are uh, where where kids are are breaking out of their dependency and being you know sort of counter dependent mm. in all sorts of ways. That's the fun mm. group. There, uh, you say you say the sky's blue, and they say it looks gray to me. I mean, that's the that's the place where it's it would be most useful to recognize. Uh, Mm. Anyway, thing. as you're saying this, what, what showed up for me is that one of the earliest polarities that, that children need to face, I mean, is at a very early age because it's a polarity of mom and dad, um, you know, or me and my sister and my brother between the siblings. I mean, all of that is polarities that the children are having to understand and, and, and um, you know, um, work yes. with it. Yeah, we're teaching them to navigate it. We may not be teaching yeah. them about the word polarities or have a map, <laughs> but we are doing our best to help them navigate, the, you know, those those tensions. And that's why I say when, when we introduce polarity thinking, it's like we're introducing something that people say, I've been living through this my whole life. Yeah. Uh, yeah absolutely. You know. So well, in the American Congress, I, you were asking who needs to learn it. I think the, the, the United <laughs> States Congress. And I'm wondering, you have the, you know, the four pillars from the, uh, uh, from the Biden Harris, uh, you know, playbook, and one of them is what was it? Something for everybody, but uh, enough. Like that. What, what's that? Abundance, abundance for some and basics for all. There you go. Mm -hmm. Abundance for some and basics for all. Yeah, it's the mm -hmm. fundamental. Share, in a way, if you think about it, that's that's a sharing concept, isn't it? it seems like it is yeah. to me. Yeah, it is, and and it's the 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 underlying. It's a part of the part whole polarity, but the underlying one of the underlying dimensions here is around freedom and equality. If we overfocus on freedom to the neglect of equality, we get gross inequality, which is the vulnerability of capitalism. If we overfocus on equality to the neglect of freedom, um, we get a loss of freedom, which is the ultimate vulnerability of socialism or communism. So each of them has a downside, but actually there's something that each of them bring, which is, which is this basic polarity of, of uh, freedom and doing, uh, exercising our freedom, our initiative, and all of that entrepreneurial spirit and ensuring uh, the basics for everyone. We can do that and they can reinforce each other. It's a false choice that we have in our heads, which undermines our ability to get basics for everyone around the planet. And I'm talking about water, food, shelter, education, mm -hmm. a reasonable work, a work for a reasonable pay, um, healthcare, and safety. Mm -hmm. uh, as basic that all of us we can as a community figure out how to provide basics of those things for everyone and allow us to have some people to have an abundance of some of those things. Um, I, I, I see a, a, a question here from Jervis that is one I've heard a lot, Barry, is what's the difference between a polarity and a paradox or a dilemma? Well, um, I know in, it's in the title of your book. Yeah. Yeah. The reason it's in the title of my book is because, um, uh, because they, at, at one level, they all could be talking about the same thing. So I'm talking about an interdependent pair. So two, two things that need each other over time. They exist in, 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 intrinsic polarities exist as interdependent pairs. So in any organization of two or more people, you're dealing with centralization and decentralization. You're dealing with the part and the whole. And so, so um, uh, if it's an interdependent pair, um, it might be interdependent pairs are sometimes called paradoxes, sometimes they're called dilemmas, and sometimes they're called polarities. So what gets confusing is that sometimes people talk about something as a dilemma and it's not an interdependent pair. And sometimes they talk about polarities and it's not an independent pair or paradox. So, so there's real confusion. My effort to, to reduce the confusion is say, if they're talking about an interdependent pair, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> if they're just talking about a fight with two people who disagree with something, uh, then, then that might be a problem to be solved. Um, so uh, so that's, that's my, my definition is that the interdependent pair and, and people who talk about paradox, polarity, and dilemma sometimes are talking about the interdependent pair. Mm. Thank you, Barry. So I'd like us to go back to the topic of relationships. And we have a question here from Doug. Um, and he says, in your experience, 
uh, what is the most powerful or several powerful principles for couples to keep in mind as they attempt to work through polarities? I can tell John has the answer to that. I have, well, I have a Just by the smile. <laughs> wait, wait for, Go ahead, John. For the expert here. <laughs> Go ahead, John. Well, I would say um, that what I said earlier, that your, your partner's position, uh, that you've gotten positional about something. And as soon as you get positional about something, you, 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 you lose the upside of your position. You, as Barry said, you start to experience more and more the downside of that exhaling. You start to experience the downside. The problem is that you're judging the other position as wrong or bad. And the irony of it is that that other position represents something that you need. Over time, you need that both are valid. So the starting point in a relationship is to say, especially in those areas where I disagree with you, I need to get curious about what is, what is valid in your world. That's why we teach the three worlds. What's going on in your world? Where are you coming from that I don't understand? What's happening in your world that has you be like that, that I'm not seeing? They're this great questions that we call the MRI. The, what's the most respectful interpretation you can come up with for that other position? That would be one thing that I would think would be a really important starting point in relationship is to see, is to at least conceptualize there's something valid over there. It's like I need to become an anthropologist rather than a judge or a critic or a salesman. I need to be curious about what's happening in that other world over there. Yeah, um, I think I think that that makes a lot of sense to me too, John. I think curiosity is really important, uh, and uh, a couple of things that that uh, come to mind for me. One is that the power dynamic is real in a relationship. The power dynamic is real in all polarities. Um, uh, the, we and with all polarities, we need to empower both poles. So if we're looking at a relationship, the, the it needs to be. Uh, what needs to be maintained is the opportunity for each people to claim power and to share power. Because mm -hmm. if we claim power without sharing power, and this can be done in a lot of subtle ways, um, uh, as well as blatant ways, but if we, claim right. power without, right. yeah, if, if we claim power without sharing power, it's an abuse of power. Um, and so, uh, so that's, that's one to appreciate. I think, I think the other one is, is uh, what a mentor of mine, Jack Gibb, shared with us. And I think I mentioned it in the last session. That is, uh, if we can see another person completely, love is a natural byproduct. And this fits with your notion about curiosity. So if, I'm, if I am feeling frustration with what somebody is doing or what they're not doing or whatever, um, the, the notion is that they are more than what they're doing or not doing that is causing me, you know, to be upset or whatever. Um, and so the desire to see them completely is a part of what I'm engaged in as we're looking at whatever we're dealing with. Um, and so uh, we know, for example, if somebody is, is uh, angry, um, we know that there's fear underneath the anger. So what are they afraid of? How can that fear be, be appreciated and addressed? Um, so, so I think that's... Uh, those those two are really important claiming power and sharing power and and knowing that if i could see them more completely love is just a natural byproduct so it's worth it's worth uh, increasing my capacity to see them completely that's beautiful i i remember early on uh, you had a saying that the opposite it was uh, in a in, in something in the chat box the opposite of every great truth the opposite is another great truth, right? And I think you had something like a, um, a penny saved is a penny earned is true, but also nothing ventured, nothing gained, you know, that these two, that, that both are absolutely true. I remember early on in our in first couple of hours of, of, of me being in your relationship, that was like, oh, that was like a, flash, a, a blinding flash of the beautiful there, a blob, we called it in the military. Yeah. Well, Barry, Aggie, we've got two or three more minutes. Is there any kind of housekeeping we need to do uh, uh, at the end here? This has been really fabulous. I could go. I could just spend all 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 night here, uh, take a snack, and come back, Barry. I I just love being with you. And and by the way, there's some things in the chat box. I just 
um, glanced at, people are are, are appreciating uh, our articulateness, which I'm really really glad is it's happening here. Mm. Uh, well, it looks like people are kind of ringing off. So let me say a couple things. One is Barry's book is out now. It's called And Barry Johnson. You really, I would highly recommend it. Uh, you should get it for anybody you live with and work with, in my opinion. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Best Christmas gift this got year. Copy, got my <laughs> copy right over here. And, uh, and then the other thing is that, it is, is that my book is going to be coming out uh, in time for Christmas as both the Kindle, as both. <laughs> As, I'm just bragging here, as both the Kindle book and as an interactive, uh, an interactive uh, a PDF book, and so we'll be giving some more information about that in the next uh, in the next uh, uh, webinar. And so we'll be putting out the word about what that what the next session is going to be about. Let me see if I can remember. I'm so excited about this one. Um, maybe maybe uh, Edita or somebody can put it in a, put it in the chat box. I think it's something about um, that seeing is not believing, I think is what we decided to call it. Mm. And what you think is out there is really not out there. <laughs> and, and that- well, I think it says that our next episode is meet the authors, uh, facing the tiger, meet the authors in the next one. Great, meet the authors, um, yeah. And, and yeah, that's what it is. And then, and then yeah, then, then after that. Okay, so can we yeah. meet the authors? So I think our next episode I, is. So my colleague, Dorota Navalanyets, and I will be, will be on next week. Well, let's just wrap up. Barry, God bless you, brother. And I give my, give my love to, to Dana. And it's so great that the, the whole world needs what you represent here, brother. And I, I, I hope that, that your effort to get it in front of, you know, the Biden Harris administration and the Congress uh, succeeds. Well, thanks a lot. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to have time to look through this and, 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 and identify five quotes because I've got another session I've got to go to. So if somebody else could take that on and, and okay. identify who, who would be the, the five people to get your book, I think it's a great offer. Um, I'm just not going to be able to be the one making the choice. I wouldn't want to do it either, but <laughs> I'm probably going to end up having to do it, take responsibility <laughs> for it. That's a stretch for me is to judge is to, is to you know have to judge yes for you and not for you yeah I want to say yes to everybody yeah okay thank well, you well thank you all very much thanks for joining us uh, we'll see you in two weeks uh, for the next episode and the recording of this episode will be available on YouTube uh, starting hopefully um, either tomorrow or Friday this week uh, so you will be receiving an email with a link to our YouTube channel. So please share that with anybody else you think um, might find this interesting. That's pretty much anybody on this earth. Uh, thank you all very much. Have a great day or evening and see you all in two weeks. Thank you, Barry, for being a wonderful guest on our webinar series. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it very much. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye.